Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So, in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks or Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is New Year resolution and it is a medium level problem. So, they have uh, given a problem in which they say that uh, there are specifically n days in which each day has a certain number of coins associated with it. Now, uh, our player can choose to solve a problem on any of these days, right? He can solve the problem on all days or basically he can select a subsequence of this particular summary. Now, after adding all the geek bits or all the coins, he will get the merchandise only if the number of coins are divisible by 20 or they are divisible by 24 or it is exactly equals to 2024, right? So, these are the three conditions. So, we have to tell whether it is possible for the person to acquire the merchandise or not. He can solve the problems on any of these days, like he can select a subsequence of this particular array, right? So, they have also given an example, if uh, he solves on the 4th and the 5th day, the sum will be 24 and it will be divisible by 24 itself. Now, they have also given 1st, 4th and 8th, 8th I believe is the last, so that is 5 plus 5 plus 10, that is 20, so it is divisible by 20, so it is also giving answer 1. So, there are two ways in this way, in this particular array to solve the problems, right? So, how can we actually solve this particular problem? The problem is uh, like not very difficult to think of in terms of DP. So, let us say we have a DP array. I am going to have a double dimensional DP, DP of IJ. So, let me just define the DP first and then we will have a look at how we can solve this. So, first of all, uh, my DP of IJ, my I denotes my current position in the array and my J denotes my current sum of the coins that I have taken, right. So, if I reach, if I reach the nth position, nth position, which means I have exhausted all the days. So, I have exhausted all the days, right. This basic, if I reach the nth position, it means basically I have exhausted all the days. Considering I am taking 0 based indexing, so the final day will be at the index n minus 1 and at the position n, I would have exhausted all the days. Now, if at this particular position, my sum is sum that is j is divisible by 20 or 24 or it is equal to 2024, right? If at this position. my answer will be 1 or true. So, we have derived the base case as well. Once I reach the nth position, that means i is equal to is equal to n and my j mod 20 is equal to is equal to 0, right. So, if this condition is satisfied or i is equal to is equal to n and j mod 24 is equal to is equal to 0 or i is equal to is equal to n and j is equal to is equal to 2024. If even like one of these conditions is satisfied, then my answer is true. So, this is going to be on base conditions. So, let me just write it. Base conditions. My starting state. So, in this case, if it is not true, I am also going to write else false. Right. And what is my starting state? Starting state is equals to dp of 0, 0. Why? Because I am at the 0th position first, that is the first coin and I have collected 0 uh, coins value till now, right? My sum is currently 0. So, this is all about my dp states. The very first thing is, I am going to create a dp of ij, double dimensional dp vector and i is going to denote my current position, j is going to denote my current sum. If I reach the nth position and at this particular position, the sum is divisible by 20 or by 24 or it is equals to 24, that is these three conditions, then my answer is true, otherwise my answer is going to be false, right. My starting state would be dp of 0, 0. So, these are all the things that we need to discuss in order to solve this particular problem, right. So, I believe uh, we have discussed the starting state, base cases and the final cases and let us now have a look at the transition states. So, how will the transitions work? So, let me just create a helper function, int i, int j. So, I am going to write the recursive code. So, if i is equal to is equal to n. Now, at this particular position, return 
So there will be three conditions that we have discussed. So I am going to write these in brackets. I have separated them by or. Even if one of them is true, the answer will return true. So the first condition is j mod 20 is equal to equal to 0. The second condition is j mod 24 is equal to equal to 0. The third condition is j is equal to equal to 2024. Right. So even if one of the condition is true, it will it is going to return true. Otherwise, it is going to return false. Now if dp of ij is not equals to minus 1, then I am just going to return dp of ij. That means I have pre-computed it and I do not need to compute it again. Right. So this is also covered. Now coming on to the actual transitions. So I can uh, solve this problem with the help of a simple note take or note take dp. Let us say I initialize both of them with 0 first and I can decide to not take it. In that particular case, I will go to the i plus 1th position and my sum will remain same. So that is why I have written i plus 1 but the sum that is j is same. Right. Now I can take the sum only if let us say j plus coins of i coins of i is less than 2025. Why? Why I have written this? Because if you look at, have a look at the constraints, the sum of the coins is only up to 2024. So if my j plus coins of i is like uh, is becoming greater than 2025, that means this condition should not be possible. So I have checked this particular condition. I believe it is not very important in the recursive approach, but it will be very important in the iterative approach. You will see in a while how. Right. So, let us say j plus coins of i is less than 2025, then only I am going, I will try to take this particular coin. So, take will be helper of i plus 1 and so at i plus 1 position, I have moved to the i plus 1 position and the number of coins will also increase by coins of i, right. So, at the end I can take deep return, return dp of ij as max of or you can also take uh, take or no take, right. So that means even if one of them is true, the answer will be true for this particular state. So you see what I have done here is, first of all, I have defined the base conditions that is, just a second, I am just going to change the color. So I have defined the base conditions here, even if one of these conditions that is this condition 1, this condition 2 and this condition is 3 is true, that means I have to return true. Now, if my current state is calculated, if I do not return from here, if my current state is already calculated, I do not need to calculate it again and I am just going to return dp of ij. I have defined two variables, take or no take, both going to represent what will be the answer if I decide to take the current element and if I decide to not take the current element, right. Now take is, uh, take, no take is very simple, why? Because I can just skip the current element, that is why I move to the next position and my sum does not change at all. Now I have put a condition here. When I decide to take the current element, it is not important in top down approach, but when you try to build up the bottom up solution or the iterative solution, this condition becomes very important, otherwise, you will have overflows. Right. So, I have just checked if j plus coins of i is less than 2025. Why this particular condition? Because the maximum sum of coins is 2024. Right. So, only if this condition is satisfied, I, am tr I will try to take this particular coin and I will still go to the i plus 1th position and my number of coins j is going to get incremented by coins of i. Now even if one of them returns true, I am just going to return take or no take, that is the logical or, right. So one of them is true, the answer will be true for dp of ij. So this was the whole solution to this particular problem. Now let me show you my code and uh, here you can see that I have created a double dimensional dp vector of size n plus 1 cross 2025. Now I have set the base cases. So here since I am building a bottom up approach, I have to define the base cases earlier. So I have, what I have done is I have taken all the multiples of 20 up to 25 and I have marked the, those states as 1, right. The, by default all the states are 0 and uh, like for all the multiples of 20 at the position n I have marked them as 1. Similarly for all the multiples of 24 I have marked them as 1 and finally the 2024 number itself I have also marked it as 1. So these were the three conditions that we had. Now let us ignore these for loops for now, let us focus on the middle part. So as you can see this middle logic is exactly the same that I have written here. I have taken take or no take, I have taken then no take. Instead of writing helper of i plus 1j, I have just written dp of i plus 1j, right. Now if coins of i plus j is less than 2025, then my take is going to be dp of i plus 1, uh, comma j plus coins of i and my dp of ij can be maximum of take or no take. You can also write take or no take basically right, like writing the logical or but this also works, right. Now as you can see, 
In this particular case, when we are building bottom up, the value of j can be up to 2024 itself, right? So, so the single value of j is 2024. Now, if I add something to 2024, it will go beyond 2024, right? Which is the maximum allowed limit. So you see, when we try to build bottom up solutions, we have to take care of this particular thing that the values do not flow out of the constraints of the problem. In top down, it will never be an issue because uh, the values only get increased when we reach a particular situation only by adding the values. But here we are trying to simulate all the values, and hence we need to take care that it does not go through like uh, out of the bounds, right? At the end, I just return dp of zero zero. I've explained why because I'm starting at position zero and my sum will be initially zero as well, right? So this would be the final solution. And one more thing, I wanted to discuss these for loops. So as you can see, my current state dp of i is depending upon no take, which in turn is depending upon a state i plus one. That basically means that dp of i depends on dp of i plus one. That means i plus one has to be computed before computing i. That is why I have taken a reverse for loop for i. Now you might wonder that that j is also depending upon take, which in turn depends on j plus something, right? So should we also take this particular for loop in reverse? That is not necessary at all. Because you see that dp of i that there is dp of i here and there is dp of i plus one here, right? So all the states of j in i plus one would have already been computed because of the first for loop. So even if you don't take the j for loop in reverse order, it would still work, right? So basically, what I'm trying to say is, uh, let me explain this once. So let's say I have an array here. This is a single dimensional array. Now I have to compute this i plus one before computing i. Right. This is what I said initially. Now let's say we have a double dimensional array. So let me draw a double dimensional array. Right. So this is i. This is j. This is let's say uh, this is this is i i plus one. Sorry. And let's say this is uh, index j. This is j plus one. Right. So we are uh, wondering that if for calculating i we are calculating i plus one first, do we have to do the same for j as well? It is not the case. Because this j plus one would have already been computed when I was calculating this particular i plus one, right? So even if I don't go j in reverse order, it will still work. But but in cases where i is the same, where i is the same, and I have to compute j plus one, that means dp of i j depends on dp of i j plus one. So in cases like these, we have to compute j plus one first, right? But here it is not necessary at all, and this would be the final solution. So let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works and the solution is absolutely correct. So you see it passes all the test cases and the solution is correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video was actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you uh, who want to keep solving new problems. So with this particular video. We come to the end of the year for this particular series, and uh, I believe I started somewhere in February, February or March. This Geeks for Geeks series. It has been a very, very long, long journey. I stopped somewhere in between around August, but uh, apart from it, uh, it has been very consistent. So thank you everyone for watching these videos and keep supporting me, and uh, we'll try to be uh, like um, even more consistent in 2024. Let's see how it goes. So that is it for today. Till the next video drops. Keep coding. Stay safe. Bye bye.